good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Raphael Dumas. I'm the team lead for data operations in the City of Toronto uh, Transportation Services Division. Uh, I'm really grateful for this hybrid operation. Um, I was originally planning on attending in person and have been sick since uh, Thursday night and decided that uh, it's probably best not to attend in person. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know, excited to talk to you about an open source tech stack for transportation data operations. So I've been at the city of Toronto for over uh, six years, um, originally in what was called the big data innovation team, if you've heard of that, um, for the last three years, four years. Um, the big data innovation team has grown up and is now the uh, data and analytics unit. Um, so you may have seen us um, from the outside uh, with our open data um, and uh, a lot of our work in uh, reports. Uh, we do a lot of um, like project and intervention uh, evaluation. Um, and so we've provided the data that goes into graphs for um, pretty much anything that has a TO at the end of it, I think. Although there's actually probably a lot more TO projects that don't involve transportation. Oh my gosh, my t slides are timed. Um, so the, the data and analytics unit is, is actually composed of uh, four teams. Um, one which is in charge of data collection uh, for two of our data sources around um, vehicle volumes or volumes uh, on the city streets and uh, collision data. Uh, the data science team, uh, which uh, deals with uh, safety and mobility. Um, so under the mobility, uh, Umbrella is, is kind of congestion, and I would say overall kind of network performance monitoring, uh, which goes into evaluating the impacts of, of like interventions on the city streets. Um, and then uh, the Vision Zero road safety uh, bucket and uh, other kind of ad hoc uh, analytics or data requests. Uh, data operations is my uh, team um, where we do data operations, uh, which I'll talk about more in a uh, second. And then we also have an analytic uh, wing uh, that is involved in emerging mobility, um, which is anything, um, I don't know, uh, an umbrella term um, that primarily means uh, the vehicle for hire industry, but we've also looked at uh, car share in the past and we'd like to be involved in, in parking and curbside management. Um, and then there's also uh, move digital product, digital, digital product team um, that are building a platform, a central platform for the division, but I guess also the city for all um, road volume and uh, collision data. And um, they also kind of have their own data operations and, and tech stack to deal with um, that they maintain and then uh, also push, push out data to open data. Um, so what is what are data operations? Um, as a uh, ring bearing engineer. Um, I'm a little bit allergic to calling things engineering that aren't, um, I don't know, recognized by the order of engineers, but uh, data operations could be referred to as data engineering. Um, we do also, so, uh, which is all about automating the data, uh, bringing it into our systems, validating, transforming, publishing it, um and building data products um but we also support digital infrastructure uh that power the rest of the unit 
Um, and um, yeah, so I don't know. I feel like operations expands a little bit uh, beyond that, beyond just the strict like data engineering piece. And uh, a lot of the, uh, we do a lot of the behind the scenes work that lets the role of data grow in our organization. Uh, so some of our data sources uh, include uh, GPS probe data, which provides um, traffic speeds on most of the city streets uh, at a five minute resolution. If you wanna learn more, you can come to my talk Friday at 11 p.m. at the University of Toronto. Uh, I'll try to find a link to, to drop. Um, we have the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi um, sniffers that are installed at intersections and measure travel times from one intersection to another. Um, we conduct a lot of um, ad hoc uh, traffic counts. We also have installed uh, almost 60 multimodal um, volume counting cameras at intersections. Um, we get ride hailing data or data on the vehicle for hire industry from our partners in municipal licensing and standards. Um, there are vehicle detector stations, such as in the bottom left, which provide um, volume and occupancy and speed data, but we mostly use the volume data. Um, we have a huge operation to kind of intake and validate collision data. Um, the city has something like, oh no, I forgot to change the label. Um, that's not weather, that's a watch your speed sign. I believe the city has on the order of 700 of them um, and they collect data on the speed of things that go in front of them. Uh, it's not just cars. If you've ever biked by one, um, you will notice that it is also tracking you. Um, and then just uh, a lot of GIS data to support um, our work. Uh, the picture data set is traffic signals. Um, so our tech stack, um, I meant to provide a number of pretty logos, but kind of ran out of time. Um, so pretty pictures are coming again. Uh, our laptops are all uh, Windows laptops. Um, for our on-prem servers, um, we uh, use Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, for our in-the-cloud servers, uh, we use Ubuntu. Um, for a lot of our ETL pipelines, we use Python. Um, for kind of ETL orchestration, we use Airflow, um, which I could talk more about in the Q&A. Um, our databases kind of across on-prem and in the cloud run Postgres uh, with some very useful extensions called uh, PostGIS and PG routing. Um, we have Jupyter Hub, which is a kind of centralized server allowing enabling Jupyter notebooks. Um, and then for visualization, the new corporate standard Tableau. And uh, in the past, we've done some Dash and maybe some R Shiny. Um, maybe some custom JavaScript. Um, so this is what our architecture looks like at the moment. Um, so on the, the left side of your screen, uh, data comes in. So from the, um, the data sources, I guess there's like three, maybe this is getting a little bit too into the weeds, there's like three kind of locations where our uh, data sources could come from. Um, they could be uh, external. So even some of our sensors are still kind of managed or the back end is managed by a third party. And so we um, can pull data from an API uh, for that sensor stack uh, from the cloud. 
um, otherwise a lot um, a lot of the other kind of sensor infrastructure um, that our division uses um, all of that data comes into a like firewalled space um, where nothing has access to the internet um, so that's a little special space and then otherwise we get stuff from the like inside of the network um, and and the reason for that distinction is you'll notice like the middle part is where we compute and do our storage and that's in the cloud and we can send stuff to the cloud but the cloud can't like reach into the city of toronto network um which means that if we are trying to send data from uh within the network or in the little special uh internet free zone we have to have infrastructure within the network to send it up but then otherwise from from the cloud we can reach outwards and and pull data um so yeah so we use, I guess, on-prem servers running Airflow or the Windows Task Scheduler to pull in data from uh, our on-prem sources. And then we use um, a cloud server um, to running Airflow to pull data sources uh, from outside of the city. Um, and then store that into our Postgres database. And then from that database, it goes to the um, open data platform. And then also, uh, I don't know if you've ever oh, seen it. There's a vision zero map and dashboard and we're responsible for a number of the data sets that go into that. Um, this blue bucket is the move kind of application environment. So they're um, it. It's a team, but it's also a software. Um, a centralized platform, as I mentioned, for uh, collision and volume data. Um, so the data is still at the moment coming from uh, legacy Oracle systems. Uh, so they have their own uh, on-prem server that extracts it from those existing systems or legacy systems and sends it to um, a Postgres database. And then the web application uh, operating on top of that data, which allows uh, people inside of the city to access and analyze uh, the data in a much easier way, as well as requesting counts. Uh, to be performed uh, is uh, on that um, cloud interface. Uh, and then they also use Airflow. And then uh, at the moment um, on our same server that is our ETL uh, in the cloud device, um, we're also running the Jupyter Hub uh, software so that people can access the database through uh, Jupyter Notebooks and do uh, kind of Python-based analyses um, through their browsers. Um, uh, oh yeah, um, uh, I have a slide saved if you wanna know where I would like to take this. So someone can ask that question of like, what is your future vision for the architecture? And please tell me more about problems you're currently experiencing. Anyways, um, our open data, um, we have uh, turning movement counts at intersections. Um, the unfortunate, well, the Bluetooth travel time data um, which hasn't been published in a, a long time, I'm sorry, but we'll fix it soon. Um, and then a variety of different data sets around the Watcher Speed program uh, from the 
uh, mobile signs, which are the ones that are not permanently mounted, and then the stationary signs, which are permanently mounted. Um, the reason these exist as two different data sets is that um, we don't automatically track the location of the signs. And so uh, the locations of the mobile signs exist as entries in a spreadsheet, and we haven't automated a process to convert that into locations. So um, two different data sets. Um, I just wanted to know, let you know, all know that we are hiring uh, for a, a second uh, Sudzi, or Senior Data Solutions Integrator. I'm going to call it Sudzi. Uh, maybe it'll stick, maybe it won't. Um, so I'm currently doing two roles, both data operations and the data science team lead, um, but we would really like to hire a data science team lead. So that position's open now. Uh, you can go to jobs.toronto.ca or in the chat or into Civic Tech Slack. Uh, and uh, my boss, Mr. Jesse Coleman, who's uh, watching this, um, is conducting a virtual information session tomorrow at noon. Um, so you should learn all about the position there if you are so inclined. Um, and that's it for this presentation.